All right, guys, thanks for joining me again. I uh, was told to go a little slower and be more precise about the things that I do. And uh, I wanted to show you all going through the upper and the grip for the Staccato XC. Everybody already knows how to do the field breakdown. So we'll do that immediately. I always make sure the hammer is all the way in so you have the least amount of resistance in your grip module when working with it. So if you are if you don't know, you want to pull this back to this first little notch and then press down on this and this little piece should just float right out or I put my nail behind it. And at that point you release forward and your slide should float off. Okay. So the reason it was tensioned a little bit is because this kind of fell down. So this is your Dawson toolless guide rod. Mine is tuned with an Atlas recoil spring and a buffer system. So when you push down it releases on this little ledge and you're able to take it apart. Usually I just wipe those down and wipe this internally. I've got a Pro Series non-chlorinated 3M brake cleaner. That'll make sure your DLC coating does not wipe off of the, the finish, okay? So at this point, this is a normal breakdown of what you would do in the field. So to pull this out, sometimes you push out and it doesn't work. Well, this actually has to drop down and push forward because it comes back in seats. You saw that? So that should float out. But again, if you're having issues, most of the time it's going to be this little... Uh, I don't know what you would call this, but this is where your release floats in and holds the pistol together. That needs to be down when you're releasing any of the 19 or 2011 platforms for the uh, for the barrel from the top of the top of the receiver. So we have those parts, okay? Again, that is the normal breakdown. I usually take it and clean out areas like in here. It's just absolutely black. So this is just wiping with a dry material. I haven't actually put anything wet in here yet. Again, I use a non-chlorinated brake cleaner. I do a little dish of it. Okay. And so that'll allow me to really go through the gun and it dries like alcohol. So I'll go through it and I'll do this again with a different type of brush or anything that you'll use. You know, I've got a bunch of different materials here to clean out all this area right here. So you're always going to want to clean up against the firing pin wall and where your ejector and extractor are. So again, so that's, that's cleaning. A lot of people want to know how to clean the inside of the compensator right here. So personally, I don't, I don't care if you don't like what I do. So I find a little piece that I want to get off. And I see there's a little piece in here on that edge. So I'm just going to chip at it away. And then I dump it out. And honestly, you go shoot it two or three times, not even kidding, it gets black again. Um, I don't think my compensator at the inside is ever going to be normal again. I don't expect it to be. And if you have a comp gun like this, you should learn that. So that's normal breakdown. You're going to wipe in here. You're going to wipe over the top of your reset. So you never want this hammer to float down and chip away at the metal. So you're going to hold in your safety, put your thumb here, pull your trigger and allow it to float onto your thumb and ride forward and not slam against the wall right here and mess up your firearm, which is also why another thing in here, why you shouldn't be letting your slide drop on an empty chamber. So that's that. Let's start with the upper slowly for you to see. This is the firing pin right here. 
I use a little ear cleaning tool that I ordered. Love it. And what I do is I push on the back of this firing pin and this is a little plate that's going to slide down. So I push this down and I kind of move it a little bit and you'll see it start to slide down. Well make sure you have your finger over the back of this because your firing pin is about to release when you pull this little plate out. So when I pull this little plate out, I didn't push it out far enough. So I'm going to push this out a little more. And as I pull this plate out, that firing pin is going to pop up. See that? So this plate has a little sleeve that it floats in. And so does the ejector or extractor. So pull the firing pin out and there's a hole that you need to clean. So this right here, as you can see, I don't ever pull from up here. You're going to pull this and stretch it out. This is seated with a little tension right here. So I hold the base and pull and it comes off. And then I clean the tip of this, which I've already done. If you can see, it floats all the way up to the, sh to the base. And on this side, it stops and then it seats at the very tip. So then you're done with your firing pin. Now you need to work on the extractor or ejector. I forgot which one it is. It, I get them mixed up. So in here you can see there is a little clip right there. That is tensioned towards the inside. You're going to be pushing that out and down. I use a lot of different tools. What you really can use is a plastic toothbrush. So I'm going to push in and I'm going to take my other finger and push down at the same time. And if you heard that little click, I just pushed it in and it seated into the hole. At that point, some people like to grab the back of this and pull on it. I think if you're not grabbing this with a rubber piece or anything, you're just going to mess it up and, and chip this away. So again, I use this ear cleaning tool. I go through the front up here. I make sure to go into this little hole. And I push. And it falls into my hand. And I didn't scratch anything up. Okay, so again, this is another place I've already cleaned this off, but there's a ton of gunk that's going to wind up all over this and you're going to have failure to ejects. And you also need to clean inside this hole. And I'm about to show you after, I think, 20 rounds, what can happen. So this is the ejector hole, right? I'm going to go to the edge and just clean and just barely wipe at the very tip. Okay, watch this. It's so black and full of carbon and that's all in the inside of that ejector, extractor hole. Sorry, again, I get those mixed up. But that's just black soot all over. And let's go ahead and do the firing pin hole. Uh, not so bad. Let's go ahead and put that back through this and see if we can get it a little darker. So I usually put it at the tip because that's where you're going to get the most grime is right up in this little edge. Okay. And to me, after you get in here with the toothbrush and stuff, you're finished with the upper. Okay. And we'll show you how to put that back together in a minute. <clears throat> We're going to start on the grip, which is a little bit more difficult to understand. So again, my parrot has flown the coop. Hold on a moment. Come here.
My little goofball. Hey. Let's go back in your cage. Okay. So you want this hammer. It floats a little bit because of the spring in here. It's okay. That's just normal floating. But you have your tension that you want to release on your thumb. Don't let it slam. Okay. And again, you want to clean on top of here, which is your reset. That little tiny bead right there, that's your reset. You want to make sure that whole slot inside is clean. I'll show you how to do that. So when you have this released all the way for the tension, you should be able to take this little set screw or set pin out. See, it just floated out. Super easy because there's no tension on here. If this hammer would have been back, that would have been very difficult and this little piece would have fallen out a lot harder. So when this comes down, you have a little bar in here that seats in this little shaft that floats out. If you put it over this way, it'll actually flip back in and then you can put this all together and it goes in this hole right here that has a spring on it. Okay, so that's the back and now you have the um, grip safety and you have your leaf spring. So this little safety is actually very difficult to take off. So to actually get this safety off, it needs to be back. If it's forward, this is almost locked in, seated inside. It's hard to explain until you get it apart, but this hammer should be back lift this up, not down, lift this up and this little rod should come out a little bit and you'll start to move this back and forth and you'll start to get a little wiggle and a little space in between here. Well, remember your little rod right down here has a spring tension that comes over here also. It's a little spring with two different pieces. So I take a little tiny flathead, I take it on this very inside and start to release it. And if you see, it's actually coming apart slowly and I'm not scratching anything up, okay? And I'm gonna keep my finger over this to make sure that this little spring right here and right there don't fly out, okay? So I turn it and it's up. So as of now it's released and that little piece is already floated back behind it and it stopped. So it didn't fly off. So now you can lift this up and take off the first part of your safety. <clears throat> and now this little piece floats right out. And now you turn it over. You have a sleeve that floats Hi, sorry. You have a sleeve that floats in here. Comes back up. You float out. And it's got a piece in here that seats into this one. So now that you've released those, your grip safety should come off. And if you look in the back of here, you're going to oh, you're going to see your ignition system so you never want to worry about this and how to bend it or anything like that okay this is just how to take your gun apart and to properly clean it and I'll spray on the inside of here this is your ignition system and this is the back of your trigger so right here this long one is the back of your trigger and this starts your ignition system. Both of these have the reset. All right. And I don't want to tell you what this does or any of these leaves because then you'll start messing with them. So when I put these in, I'm going to put this in over the top of it. And I'm going to have this little edge. You can see that edge. It's going to seat right in there. And there's only one way it goes. So put that down and it fits right in that edge. You see that? 
right there. And then <clears throat> to start putting it back together, I'm going to float this in and those leaves should push up against that ignition system and be floating on to it and not up into it. Just remember that. This shouldn't be put up or anything like that because it's going to go under. This needs to be on top like this. Not like this, but on top. So make sure it's on top. Okay. In the edge right down here. Put this back in the groove and as you put this in this will flatten down onto it and now I put um, I don't put my piece in yet because you're gonna need this to move a little bit <clears throat> to put your grip safety back on so we're gonna start that okay <clears throat> so the first part is Dropping this down so this can float in, but you're still holding your spring in. And this double part is your left side of the safety. The single part with the thin is the part that's going to float into this groove over here. I like to start up here and then it floats down into the groove and I just have that sitting there to start. Remember though, this is in here now. When you put your grip safety on, let's go ahead and start there. Grip safety, that little pin and that rectangular bar is gonna float in here and the bottom of this bar is gonna go into that hole. See how it floats? So I'm gonna go ahead and do this upside down and put these in to where that bar is in there now And this can now have some tension up here and be able to seat. I'll put my set pin in. My hammer is all the way up so there's no tension on the spring. And I can now come over to this side and start with my first part of the safety. And that now holds in my grip safety. Now this is the bitch. Longer part, shorter part. The shorter part goes to the front. Okay, this is gonna go in here, and this is why I love this little ear cleaning tool, because it's got this little pointy part. And these are gonna lock in together when this safety is up, up here. Not down or over. It's gonna have to be up here, and you'll find a little groove where it fits. So I'm gonna start back here. and make sure that they both fit into the hole and it's gonna slide in. You'll see them both just sitting there, but also you have that little bar you have to push in. Well, remember, that's where it's gonna find and lock in. So this is gonna have to match over here and you're gonna have to push this little tiny bar in at the same time, okay? So I'm gonna try to do this closely. So I'm going to push this in and I'm going to push this bar in and that bar is not seated all the way. Okay, I just forgot. Again, this is something you have to remember. This hammer, I'm still pushing on that little pin. This hammer has to be back, not the first one, but the second one, sorry, to actually seat and meet and lock in. So I actually didn't lock in yet because the right one wasn't in. So I'm glad you're seeing this firsthand because this is a little hiccup that'll happen while you're sitting there at the table. So I'll pull it out just a little bit more and you can see now how there's a gap again. So this one is floating before it wouldn't go down because this side already seated and that little tiny bar is still being pressed in. So I'm going to match these up again and press them in make sure they match push in to that little bar and this right side again is seated into the little groove and the left side is going to match up with it 
right there. So now the hammer is back, it just matched up. Now they both work together. So that's a little tricky to have to do. That is the grip. I'm glad that little hiccup happened because it will happen to a lot of you too. This little bar has one way to go. You can see how it goes. It's got a little bow towards the inside. So you're gonna take it and put it into the right hole. And as of right here, it's gonna be tensioned. It's gonna be hard. So you're gonna actually have to push over a little bit and down and it'll fit into the groove. But now that it's fit into the groove, it floats back and forth and it's gotta be straight this way and flush with the metal so this little plate fits in after we push in this firing pin. So I'm going to push down on this firing pin. I'm gonna hold up a little bit on this piece down here, the extractor slash ejector. I forgot which one it is, okay? So I'm gonna do all this at the same time and float this into that little groove. Let me watch this and not the camera. So you find your little groove for the metal. Make sure everything starts to meet up. And as you feel it float, you'll be able to just release on everything and push forward. Let's see. Is this straight? Okay. And that little firing pin floated straight up into that hole. So now it's seated and the upper is put back together internally after you've cleaned it, okay? I'm running an Atlas buffer and a recoil tuning spring. So you have an open part of your coil. You have a closed part of your coil. And on your toolless guy rod, you have a lever that holds the action. You're gonna put the closed part down. You have an open area and you have a ledge. Your ledge goes up, your open goes down over the open part of the coil. Once you press this down, make sure that the ledge of the rod is faced towards you. So when you press this down, you can press this up and the ledge hits the bracket and it seats for you so you can install it. If you have this buffer, make sure they're matching. So when you float this onto the barrel, you have no issues. This is aluminum uh, buffer. Again, you want this down, not up, to go in here or else it won't go in. Down. And when you put this together, it should float in this way. If you saw it seat, now lift this up or this will not go in. When you push this in, make sure this shaft goes in lightly and this little edge seats over the barrel. Once you do that, then you can push with your thumb and follow this down as that shaft comes off. Follow it down and then make sure this is up so you can find your hole when putting your firearm back together. For me again, I personally like to have my hammer down. It's just up to you. So I'll drop my hammer or safety off, huh. drop my hammer. So in here, you're going to find this hole first. It's very easy to find this hole first. Okay. Go in here. And if you're looking in there, well, you can see it. So if you're looking in there, you can find the hole right there. That's where it starts. So you can put this in there. And if it doesn't seat all the way, pull it back a little bit. And it'll fall in. Once it falls in, it's not going to go all the way you have to go to this little tiny half circle, not here, your half circle. So once you go to that half circle, you can drop it in. And then your gun is put back together. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate your time and good luck to you. If you have any questions, message me.